Okay, I think that's given everyone enough time to join now. So I'll go ahead and, and start the webinar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Charlie House. I'm the Client Relationship Manager at Reflect Marine. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us today on what is our second webinar for our, for our latest personnel crane transfer device, the Frog XT2. Uh, first off, some housekeeping. Today's webinar is scheduled to last about one hour, including the Q&A session at the end. All attendees are automatically muted to allow speakers to present without interruption. Questions will be submitted via the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. Um, and you can ask questions any anytime throughout the webinar and we'll, we'll address them at the end of the, during the Q&A session. You can minimize the view of the speaker's cameras by clicking on the little minus button above the presentation screen. Um, and the presentation recording will be sent to you approximately 24 hours after today's session. So uh, we'll begin with a short introduction to Reflex Marine as a company and our experience in the sector of personnel transfer carriers. I will then hand over to my colleagues joining us today, Mrs. Uh, Sandra Antonovich, uh, Reflex Marine's Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Victor Suarez, our Senior Trainer. Sandra will walk us through the benefits and the applications of using the Frog XD2 in different op operational scenarios. Victor will be able to answer any questions about technical features of the Frog XC2 and implementing it within your operational procedures. Okay then, as I'm not seeing any remarks or questions in the chat right now, I think we'll get ready to start with the uh, introduction to Reflex Marine. So with over 25 years experience, Reflex Marine specializes in personnel crane access. It is now widely recognized as the leading manufacturer in safe personnel crane transfer equipment. Our products are used in over 75 countries and there are now 1,200 of our devices in operation globally, with an estimated 1 million safe transfers carried out each year using our equipment. You may be familiar with the range of carriers from Reflex Marine called the Frog. The original Frog capsule was developed over 25 years ago and has helped steer conversations and change attitudes in the offshore industries globally. In 2014, we developed the improved range of carriers called the Frog XT, available in, in capacities for four, six, and 10 passengers. The Frog XT carriers, carriers are now uh, the safest devices in the world for offshore crew transfer with an unprecedented safety record of no fatalities and zero lost time incidents. A few years ago, we designed our first carrier for standing passengers, the Wave 4. And finally, two years ago, we introduced our first design of the work basket, Stormwork. The exceptional design and engineering of our products has brought multiple awards and recognition globally, including most recently the Leo Safety Awards for the Stormwork Work Basket. We are the only manufacturer in offshore personnel access equipment with thoroughly, which thoroughly tests and documents the process. You can see the test, test, testing videos for our products via our YouTube channel. Our latest development, the Frog XT2 carrier, which we'll, be, which we'll be looking at today is the culmination of over 5,000 design and engineering hours. The concept and design of the Frog XT2 is driven directly by market demand across multiple industries. So now let me please introduce you to Sandra and Victor, um, who can run you through the presentation in more detail. Uh, Sandra, over to you. Hi. Um, good afternoon, everyone, or good day, uh, depending from which time zone you are joining. Uh, special welcome to our uh, partners. Uh, we have quite a few of our partners joining the webinar. Uh, so hello to everyone. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it's a busy time of the year. Um, I will try to keep this brief and to the point. So um, we thought it might be useful uh, to do a product presentation uh, in this way, uh, given the current situation um, and the global pandemic, um, uh, we wanted to give people the opportunity to ask questions um, and to uh, submit any uh, feedback that they might have uh, regarding this new product. Uh, quickly, before I start with presenting the product itself, uh, Charlie did mention for those of you who are unfamiliar with Reflex Marine as a company, uh, we have 30 years of experience in designing and manufacturing offshore safety equipment. Uh, we have a rather um, niche uh, product portfolio uh, and we have specialized in 
designing and manufacturing uh, personal crane transfer uh, devices. Uh, we have a design team in-house, uh, so we do designing and engineering in-house, and we have uh, quality control manufacturing in Scotland, in UK. Uh, we are probably, it would be fair to say that we are uh, the only method of transferring people offshore that has a record of 10 years without a lost time, without a recorded lost time incident. I should be precise with this. Um, and we are supporting any and all of the industries. So it means that our products are used not just in traditional oil and gas uh, situations offshore, but uh, also throughout uh, the other market segments from LNG to offshore civil engineering and Coast um, Guard and Navy. Uh, more than 1 million transfers are done with our uh, using our personal transfer carriers throughout the year, each year, and we supply them to over 70 countries in the world. Um, uh, sorry. Sorry, I'm still trying to get a hang of uh, this platform. Um, I did mention that we have in-house design and Charlie also uh, mentioned briefly that we uh, do thorough testing on all our prototypes before they go into uh, manufacturing and become off-the-shelf products. Uh, during the testing process, we follow MIRA recommendations, uh, which essentially means that our uh, testing uh, methodology and procedures are very similar to when a personal vehicle or car is being tested uh, for different um, impacts. Um, so we follow the same rules basically when we do our tests. Uh, tests are done in our uh, research and development facility in Barcelona in Spain. And some of the testing videos are available on our YouTube channel. So please uh, go over to our YouTube channel to, um, to enjoy the viewing the how the testing works. Uh, we have quality controlled manufacturing. Once you have our product, whether you are uh, you have purchased it or whether you are renting it, uh, we do offer training and commissioning support uh, and uh, operational support throughout the lifespan of each product. The lifespan of each product is between four and 10 years, depending on the usage category. I will talk about this a little bit later and explain the usage category in a bit more detail. And obviously we offer replacement parts and servicing. Uh, we have extensive service network uh, across the world with approved service centers um, in different countries. And we provide servicing on and offshore uh, depending of your preference and particular operational situation that you might find yourself in. Uh, development of ROG XT2 uh, began um, quite a few years ago, seven years ago. Uh, first prototyping was done in 2014. And then final design and prototype was completed in 2020. The product is currently in the final phase of being C marked, uh, so it will have C type approval and uh, it will go into uh, manufacturing and become off the shelf product in December. So, in just a few uh, days. Uh, Frog XT2 is a part of our XT uh, product range family. Uh, in this family, we have three other. Uh, carriers, uh, XT4, XT6, and XT10, where the number uh, describes the capacity, so how many passengers uh, can fit into, into each product. So we have four person, six person, and 10 person um, carriers uh, available. Uh, this is a video that we will play now, the, which will give you uh, an insight of the unit and you will be able to see uh, how the unit looks inside and also how the unit looks when it's disassembled and which are the most Im important parts of the unit. Uh, if we could please show the video. Thank you.
Great, thank you. Um, you have noticed on the video at the beginning and in the end that this product was developed in collaboration with Orsted and with Seaside David, their crane producer, and Orsted is a wind energy operator, uh, which um, clearly indicates one of the um, one of the potential use of this product uh, would be uh, offshore wind industry. Uh, I will talk about some other uh, market segments which uh, would find this product very useful um, in a in a, a few slides. But before that, uh, we'll focus on product safety features, which were also indicated in the video. Uh, protected seating position, fall protection, vertical impact protection, lateral impact protection, and, and uh, flotation. Uh, these are in line with our other XD range products. Uh, so all of them, uh, all products in our uh, Frog XD family uh, have the same safety features. Um, and uh, they have been... Um, quite, uh, they have been tested by a lot of our clients in very harsh conditions. Um, and we um, have had situations where uh, they protected passengers from uh, quite serious threats, um, whether caused by weather or by malfunctioning of uh, other parts of equipment. uh product features and the user manual um victor will uh, um, in a minute run us through the main uh parts of the user manual uh, you will all receive a copy of the user manual uh, with this presentation uh, so it will be made uh, available to you it is a public document um, all user manuals for all our products are available on our website they can be downloaded free of charge um, basically, they outline uh, the best practices in how to use the product and how to maintain it. Uh, so they give recommendations and advice on best usage and maintenance. Um, and they also provide um, uh, basic information on which parts you should be using uh, in servicing and uh, maintaining of the product and also uh, they explain in quite a lot of detail the operational envelopes in which the product can be used. Victor will run us through that in just a moment. Um, so uh, the, I should just mention that the user manual that you will receive with the presentation after this webinar is the final draft. Uh, there won't be any major changes to the final version. Uh, the final version will be issued and will be uh, available on our website as soon as the C marking is complete. So once we receive the type uh, approval, usually that's the, that triggers issuing the final version of the user manual. But the one that you will receive has been submitted to C uh, marking uh, body and there won't be any major changes or any changes at all. Uh, I'll hand over to Victor now. So the next couple of slides, uh, Victor will run us through. Um, these are screenshots from the user manual, and he will talk a little bit about um, product specifications and other uh, parts. Thank you. Victor, over to you. Muted. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will drive you through the the main product specifications and also about some. Uh, I will drive you through operating parameters of the XT2 carrier today. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, a product with a very small footprint. It's one 1,600 mils by 1,600 mils and a high of 2,071 mils. Uh, I think this is a remarkable uh, feature in terms 
of uh, the requirements for a small landing area when performing the operations and in some way this is also improving the operating envelope of the carriers. As you can also see, uh, we have a maximum gross mass of 500 kilos, including that weight and payload. So uh, that also drives us to, to, to spot ourselves in the point that there are lots of cranes. Of course, if these cranes are uh, man riding cranes and certified for that purpose, those cranes from a large range can be operating with this type of carrier. So there are many possibilities open there. Uh, well, as you can see in the video, we have a very strong frame, stainless steel frame, buoyancy of polyurethane that will protect passengers. Uh, and also remarkable should be to speak about the landing feet. We are using especially a foam landing feet that work as very good shock absorbers. Uh, in my point of view, I think we should uh, speak about the crane transfer risks uh, or the risk associated to crane transfers so that everyone can have a, a wider view of these uh, product specifications and operating parameters of these carriers. So we, we should take into account that the main risk associated to crane transfer operations are vertical collisions or heavy landings, lateral collisions, uh, the possibility of immersion and also the possibility of people people falling off the carrier. So taking these uh, main risks associated to crane transfer operations, then we will have, I think, a better point of uh, analysis for uh, assessing all these product specifications and the operating parameters of the carrier. Uh, what I would like to highlight, I mean, we have already talked about the safe uh, working load of the carrier and the, the maximum gross mass, giving us a lot of uh, possibilities. Uh, the carrier offers also protection during uh, vertical impacts of 3.1 meters per second. And passengers are also protected uh, by, the, by the flotation panels uh, during lateral impact protection, during lateral impacts. So they have protection for those lateral impacts. Uh, the units can serve right, as, as you can see on the video, up to 180 degrees from the inverted, inverted position of the vertical. Uh, important also to highlight the, the use of harnesses in these type of carriers, which will prevent passengers from falling off the carrier. And also the two stainless steel gas springs oil dampers that will also increase the protection of passengers during heavy landings. Uh, well, Sandra was uh, covering part of the certification process and the quality standard which we've, uh, which uh, the unit has been manufactured under. And you can see that it's manufactured to ISO 9001, 2015. And we follow standards, uh, quality standards and technical standards from the UK and also from European, from the European community, as well as the national regulations in the UK, like UK, Pure and Lola. Uh, in this slide, my, my intention by showing this slide, my intention is to show you uh, the operational parameters uh, according to the sea state. And as you can see, of course, there is uh, a great, great uh, envelope of uh, operations, especially when we are operating uh, the capsules from platforms of so fixed platforms to vessels. Of course, these uh, operational envelope will be decreasing in terms of what uh, what are the, the the elements involved in the crane transfer operation. As you can see in the last line. Uh, if we establish a proportion of uh, operational parameters according to sea state, when transferring people from a barge to a vessel, we have a uh, possibility of transferring possibly, uh, people uh, up to 1.6 uh, significant wave height, meters uh, wave height. Uh, of course, you, you can also evaluate 
uh, and observe that we have a green area and a yellow area. So in that yellow area, so we still have the possibility to perform those transfers, but a, a deeper risk assessment should be conducted. And what we always recommend, especially when condition, weather conditions are not ideal, we always recommend the performance of a dry run. That means that you should, or operators should just lift the carrier and perform a, a lift or a transfer without passengers just to assess what are the weather conditions and what is the performance of the carrier during this transfer operation. Uh, recommended parameters. Okay, uh, we already talked about the vertical impact protection and the lateral impact protection, as you can see, 3.1 meters per second, or in case of the lateral impact protections, uh, provided to passengers up to two meters per second. Uh, I think it is re very remarkable, once again, to mention the, the requirement of landing area, which is in this case, or for this particular carrier, or a carrier of four meters by four meters, that's a landing area. The landing area required on the vessel, uh, on the installation. Of course, the installation will not be submitted to uh, the relative uh, motions uh, in in this, with the same intensity as in the vessel. So the requirement of the landing area will be two meters, two point five meters by two point five meters. So as you can see, a very small landing area is required. Uh, important to know the different type of inspections that the unit should go through. As all of you are familiar with the pre-use checks during uh, the or prior to starting any operations in the industry, all the equipment involved in operations should be pre uh, pre pre pre-use checked prior to the operation. So we will conduct a pre-operational check and make sure that the unit is uh, safe for use. Uh, this type of pre-use check will be conducted by uh, the, the staff or the personnel working on the vessels or in the installation. Of course, this will be conducted by competent, uh, competent person, per people that have been already trained for this purpose. Uh, the carriers will be submitted to a visual inspection at least every six months, uh, an examination every 12 months or annually, annual examination. And if there is a case in which after conducting an examination, critical components should be replaced, uh, a load test should be performed. And after that load test, a post load test inspection should be conducted just to make sure that during the load test, non criticals or none of the critical or non critical components in the units got damaged during the load test. What I would like to go through now is through the Frog Steel recommended inspection and maintenance schedules. As you can see, and Sandra was uh, already mentioning that, but I would like to make uh, more emphasis on this. The, Inspection and maintenance schedules will be will be conditioned by the usage of the carrier. Uh, in in regular cases or in the cases in which the units are in in the low usage category or medium usage category, as you can see, visual inspections should be conducted at least every six months, and examinations should be conducted annually. What I would like to highlight also is uh, our position about the sling assembly. We are very conservative about the use of the sling assembly, and we strongly recommend replacement of a sling assemblies, regardless of a low usage of a carrier, at least every year. As you can see in this uh, in this table, uh, the units that are uh, performing. Uh, more than 500 transfers, up to 2,000 transfers, and I consider under a high usage category. Uh, there is a small variation here in the in the uh, period of uh, conducting inspection and uh, ins inspections, uh, let's say visual inspections or examinations. 
in the case of visual inspections, uh, when the units are under high usage, those visual inspections will be conducted every three months. And you can also notice that in this case, we recommend the replacement of the wire rope lifting assembly every six months, as well as the critical components. If we go back to the first uh, to the first line with units with a low usage category, you can see that the replacement of critical components will take place every 36 months, of course, if these critical components are in good conditions. Uh, uh, let's say that units uh, that are under a very high usage, that's more than 2,000 lifts per year in this case, not only visual inspections will be conducted every three months, but also examinations should be conducted every six instead of every, every 12 or annually. In this case, every six months, uh, uh, an examination should be conducted and as you can see also the replacement of the wire rope lifting assembly will be performed more regularly and in this case we will change a sling every three months as well after critical components will be replaced every six i will hand it over back to sandra so she she will continue to to explain more details of the offshore applications of the new carrier Great, thanks so much, Victor. Um, so back to uh, back to the application of this type of carrier. Um, I did mention after you saw the video um, because the unit was designed um, in collaboration with uh, Orsted and Seaside Davids that uh, we had the offshore wind uh, market segment in mind. Uh, with that. However, um, I also mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that the concept work uh, for this unit started seven years ago. Uh, so we did have a low capacity unit uh, um, in our minds quite, quite a few years ago. Uh, we did develop a one person unit uh, several years ago and we had a prototype in Southampton um where some of you might have seen it um so that one was called xt1 uh xt2 um the main development uh process on xt2 started in 2000 and uh, at the end of 2018 and then went on throughout uh 2019 uh, we had um, in mind quite a few market segments uh, operating offshore. Uh, one of the main uh, was LNG uh, and different sides of operations in that market segment from uh, bunkering and ship-to-ship -ship transfer operations to uh, liquefaction and regasification terminals and then uh, for any contingency uh, or emergency uh, use in uh, any uh, part of the LNG op operations process. Uh, we also had uh, quite a few inquiries about the low capacity unit from ports and shipyards. Some of them were interested in low capacity unit and so for some of them, the capacity wasn't so much an issue, but the footprint was and the storage of the unit. Uh, so we took that into consideration as well, uh, both for onshore and offshore use or close to shore use and um, out on the sea use where the storage space is at a premium um, and uh, operations have to be very careful in uh, how much storage they take um, uh, for personal transfer carriers. So we had that in mind as well. Uh, I did mention liquefaction and regasification terminals. And then uh, we also had some uh, inquiries from general shipping industry. So for merchant shipping industry, uh, particularly from Greece, um, during Posidonia conference um, um, that we attended uh, twice, um, a discussion was held with different companies in how we can develop um, low capacity and small footprint 
uh, carrier that would still have the same safety features as our XD range. So they did recognize the importance of having the safety features from the XT range and have a high capacity, uh, sorry, a high operational capability unit um, that can operate in very harsh weather conditions and can protect passengers in the right way and is very stable in high wind and um, in different um, uh, sea state uh, conditions, uh, but is uh, light and it can be easily stored and doesn't take a lot of space during landing. When Victor walked you through the landing area, um, uh, please bear in mind that all uh, information in the user manual is uh, on the conservative side. Um, each operation is quite unique and uh, can be very different. Uh, our operation support team and Victor is uh, in that team uh, with uh, a few other people are happy to support you in helping you understand what is the best operational envelope uh, to use this type of personal transfer carrier in the operations that you are having in the location where your operation is happening and in the scenario that you are uh, experiencing, uh, taking into consideration the size of the vessel, uh, the landing area that you have available. Uh, so uh, uh, the landing area can be smaller, uh, but it would depend on the risk assessment and the other parameters that uh, we would be happy to to guide you through and to help you uh, do your risk assessment. Uh, in most cases, we do that uh, free of charge, so it's not something we charge for. Uh, we are just trying to ensure that people who are using our products are using them in the safe, in the safest possible way. Hope that makes sense. Um, so to sort of sum up on the application of the unit, uh, while it is targeting uh, segments that uh, require either low capacity units or uh, very or have very limited um, uh, landing space or storage space, it can be used by anyone. So it can be used by anybody uh, who needs to transfer people offshore. It doesn't have any limits in terms of um, which industry can actually use that. Um, it is the latest uh, addition to FROG uh, XT product range, which I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Um, uh, so we developed it to reiterate this again, to accommodate clients um, with limited deck space or landing space that still wanted all the features of the XT uh, range. And at the moment, it is the safest solution for low capacity personal transfer uh, available in the world. Uh, it is versatile in application. It is very easy to use. It doesn't require any particular uh, commissioning process. You un it comes fully assembled. Uh, all you have to do is unpack it and, and start using it. Do the visual in inspection first, follow Victor's uh, guidelines. Uh, it is very cost effective in terms of ownership experience. Uh, we can provide you with information on um, what would be the, the cost of maintenance over a period of um, the lifespan of the unit. If you would like that information, I would suggest you uh, send us an email. There will be contact details at the end of the presentation, and we would be happy to provide you with information of how much would it cost you to, to own this unit. So what would be the ownership cost throughout its lifespan? Um, more and more companies are interested in this type of expense because they are trying to understand not so much how, what would be the purchasing cost, but also what would, how much would that cost them um, uh, over a period of years. Uh, I did mention already in detail that it has safety and operational features of Frog XT range. Um, procurement versus rental, um, a million dollar question for some companies. Uh, for some companies, it's a rather simple decision. I think it depends on the operation you are having and what you are trying to 
uh, do and what is the main purpose of using the product and uh, how long is your project going to go on for. Uh, so for shorter projects uh, that have a very known start and end date, uh, it might make more sense to just rent it out and not um, end up with an unnecessary asset at the end of the, the project, which you are not sure whether you are going to need again. Um, for long-term projects, or if you know that you will have uh, other projects in the pipeline, and you have other projects in the pipeline, and you know that you will uh, need to move people continuously, um, it might make more sense to buy. Uh, in both cases, regardless whether you buy or rent, we offer uh, full support. So we can uh, we offer the uh, unit management or the fleet management, depending whether you have one or multiple units. Uh, we are currently doing that for companies like BP uh, in uh, uh, both West Africa and Caspian, where basically they do not have to think when the unit is due for inspection or when some parts need to be changed, we do it for them. Um, for long-term rentals, for medium and long-term rentals, uh, they might be easier on the cash flow uh, for some companies uh, who find that uh, part of business um, planning important uh, because you have the option of paying monthly or quarterly or in whatever periods work for you. Uh, with procurement, it's um, it's... Uh, pretty straightforward. So it's usually 30-day payment terms uh, once you make the purchase. Um, we do, as I mentioned, uh, risk and operational assessments. Um, in most uh, cases, they are free of charge. So we do support our clients uh, when they come to us with operational questions and they require some kind of support. Uh, if uh, any um, of these questions turn into a project work. So if the unit has to be customized for whatever reason, uh, or something has to be um, fundamentally changed, then that would enter into a project um, a sort of box and, and you would be dealing with the project team. Um, Regardless whether you are uh, buying or renting the unit, we offer training for uh, your crew and for um, everybody else in, involved in this part of the operation. Uh, we also offer uh, post-sale support during the lifetime of the product and we guarantee that you will be able to uh, buy original uh, parts from, from us as the manufacturer. Global support map is another thing that I think is important to emphasize. Uh, so we are currently supplying to over 70 countries across the globe in all, on all continents. Uh, we have approved service centers on all continents in multiple countries on each continent. Um, so we are able to support you 24 seven uh, with whatever you may need uh, with our trained and certified technicians uh, onshore and offshore. Um, so all it would need is um, to have the information from you um, and then we would, uh, we would contact the appropriate people and you would get the support that you need. Um, I did mention customizable solutions. So, uh, and to go back to uh, some of our other products, uh, wave and um, stonework, so our work basket. Um, we developed stonework in collaboration with, at that time, CUA Heavy Lifting uh, and also with Conoco Phillips. For Conoco Phillips, we did a customized stonework maxi. Uh, for wave, we did uh, one version of a very customized uh, option for that was used by a Dutch company um, in Russian uh, sea. Uh, so we can do these types of work uh, while most of, all of our products are off the shelf products. We do provide uh, customizable solutions if you re require them. 
uh, then we um, we introduce you to our product development team and then you are working with them uh, on getting uh, exactly the product with the specifications that you require. At the moment, we are going through a similar process with Daman for one of their vessels. So um, it is possible and, and we do we do it for uh, for quite a few of our clients. And that's it for today. I hope this was useful. Uh, here, uh, here is the best email that you can contact us on. Also, please do go to our YouTube page. There are interesting videos there to see and you can um, have an idea of how we test other products. You saw on this video how we test XT2. Uh, connect with us on LinkedIn or follow us on LinkedIn if, you, if you're not following us already. Um, and do visit our website. Uh, we have loads of downloadable materials uh, for free, uh, user manuals, guidelines, um, uh, best practices, case studies, uh, very interesting and very useful um, for different um, market segments and for all clients and partners. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, is there any questions, Charlie? That's great. Yeah, thanks. Both. Thank you to you both. Uh, there were a couple of great questions through, actually. Um, so I'll read them out now and then either of you feel free to answer. Um, the first one is, uh, what is the recommended operational parameter for vessel to vessel transfers with the XT2? That's a good one. Yeah, as, as you can see, well, we, vessel to vessel would be quite similar to the case that we exposed uh, about according to sea state. We recommend a 1.5 significant wave height for transferring vessel to vessel. But of course, as mentioned before, uh, a proper risk assessment should be conducted prior to this operation. And I would like to remark uh, what it has been already said. Uh, prior to conducting an operation like this, which we which we consider uh, a high risk operation, in this case we recommend also after performing the risk assessment to conduct a dry run just to move or transfer the capsule from one vessel to the other to see the behavior of the capsule during that operation. And if everything complies and uh, with the risk assessment, and if everyone is happy, all personnel involved with the operation is happy, then the transfers, the transfer operation can be conducted. Um, I should probably add that. So here you can see on this slide the operational parameter, the, re the recommended operational parameters. If we take into the account sea state. Um, we use the terminology that is normally used for oil and gas industry uh, simply because that's in most of the guidelines and standards. Uh, this can, of course, be converted to any other market segment which uses different types of fixed or floating installations. Um, if you are not sure how to do that, how to transfer or convert the values um, to LNG uh, market subsegment or to offshore wind, do get in touch and we can we can help you do that uh, so that you end up with a similar table uh, with a traffic light system uh, for your particular operation. So we can do that for you if you if you need it. Uh, the the follow-on to that, that comment was to maybe for us to consider adding a special um parameter in the user manual so that's something to take back uh to the engineers uh the the next question was uh, in the case of an immersion event with the recommended uh practice for passengers to either stay in the carrier or to unbuckle and leave the carrier and that's what we state in our user manuals it's part of the operational procedure as well as we train people uh, uh, or prepare people for this type of situation. What we always recommend is that if there is an emergency, let's state to us or let's let's set two scenarios because it could be or we could be in uh, an scenario. We could be involved in an scenario that could 
be considered an emergency and is that the transfer is in, interrupt, interrupted between the vessel and the installation. I am referring to this case because we know uh, from uh, our database, we, we have been collecting a lot of incidents in the past and there were many incidents in which the carriers uh, in which people were being transferred and people were not strapped in. Uh, some of the passengers, especially because of the proximity of the carrier to the deck, took the decision to jump from the carrier and they finally got injured. So in, in an scenario like this, we always recommend passengers to keep a strap and wait instructions from the, from the deck crew or for the, from the installation uh, personnel or staff. You, if the cranes that are being used for these operations as they should be are man riding cranes, uh, recovery procedure will be reinitiated so the passengers are in the safest place when they are inside the carrier and strapped. Okay, let's state another scenario in which, for example, when we are landing on deck, for some reason, the vessel is losing a station. Uh, at all times, uh, the, the, the deck crew will take and will take serious, uh, serious caution during the operations. At this, in this particular case, passengers will be instructed to evacuate the carrier as soon as possible and will be conducted to a safe or will be guided to a safe area. Uh, of course, to, to perform this operation in a safe mode and to achieve the best results, people should have been trained prior to these uh, incidents taking place. If people do not have enough training, if people have no competence enough, of course, it will be impossible that we get a successful result when immersed or when involved in a in, a, in an emergency. Uh, I I would also like to add now that we are talking about emergencies that in many installations the our transfer carriers have been included in the evacuation in the evacuation plan. That means that. Uh, the carriers can be used for evacuating people from the installations to the vessels, uh, standing by in the oil fields or in the in the regions where or in the, in the on the fields where they are working. This means not only that we are transferring passengers to a dry haven, but also that uh, this is a reversible procedure. So, if the danger or if the threat abates then we can transfer people back to the installation safely. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Victor. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, another, the next one is, um, does the XT2 conform with Brazilian regulatory standards? Ah, the, um, the ever going question for all of our carriers. At the moment, it doesn't. Uh, no, it, it doesn't comply with um, with DPC standards. Uh, we are considering uh, going through the homologation process both for Brazil and for Mexico. Uh, but at the moment, the only uh, carrier that are that is being used offshore Brazil is Frog Six, uh, which um, had um, so for the sixty units that were. Uh, bought when the DPC certification was valid. I would have to double check with our engineering team. I'm not sure that Frog XT2 uh, would be uh, compliant with DPC uh, outline in in the Norman uh, 5 version. Uh, I can't remember now whether they're stipulating a particular number of passengers as a minimum and as a maximum. Uh, but we, for all our carriers, we are going through assessment process whether um, we should certify them in countries like Brazil or in Mexico, which have very particular uh, homologation process. So it, it is under consideration. Um, we will be, uh, if that uh, um, goes through, so if we decide to go through the homologation process for Brazil, 
uh, we will be sending out information and um, it will be uh, posted on our website. Um, but at, at, at the moment, we are uh, going through the, through the standard CE marking process. And then we'll see for the other um, countries. So this unit will be available um, with ABS statement of fact for clients who require that. Uh, it will be uh, possible to have a, a RMRS certification for clients who require a uh, Russian standard. Um, and we are, as I said, considering uh, Brazil and Mexico as, as potential certifications. Um, another question here is, what is the risk profile with respect to height of lift? Is there a limit to height of lift with passengers? The question again, please. Yeah, sure. What is the risk profile with res respect to height of lift? Is there a limit to the height of lift when carrying passengers? Uh, not really, not really. I should say. I mean, of course, the lift, the lift limit also always depends on, on the cranes. But I think this is part of the operation. I mean, uh, we we will, of course, as I said before, all the operations prior to conducting any operation, especially when transferring people, which is considered a high risk operation, a risk assessment will be conducted. And we will also we will also have the toolbox talk. So during those two uh, very serious processes, we we will consider how high passengers will be lifted. What we always recommend is that during the lift, as soon as the unit is lifted from the installation or from the vessel, all the lift will be conducted over the sea water. But I don't think there is a special limit for. And uh, we should say also that that, that limit will be, will be given by the capability of the cranes and the, the limits of the crane, I would say. Um, if, the, uh, if the person who asked this question requires further details, um, can you just say uh, yes or no in the chat box? And we will have a uh, design engineer come back to you uh with a with a precise answer if that's if if you want more information than victor just provided excellent i think yeah that, yeah so yeah that's perfect um and then finally the last question we have here is um is the attitude going to accommodate a stretcher possible to accommodate a structure inside the unit? Inside the, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, actually, the, the purpose the purpose of the, this carrier is not for transferring the structures, I would say. Uh, we have designed this carrier and we have uh, made a, a, and gone through a long verification and testing process for transferring people. What we offer is the possibility to carry small baggage together with the passengers or a small toolbox, but we we were we were not covering the possibility of transferring a structure inside the carrier. It's not it's not a cargo, it's not a cargo carrier, it's a passenger's carrier. No, Victor, I think they were asking about the stretcher. To, to uh, transfer sorry, the sorry, sorry, I, I uh, sorry, I understood the structure. Sorry, sorry. So it's, it's my mistake. Uh, well, in, this is this is something that is being under discussion at the moment. Uh, at the moment, we cannot assemble an stretcher. I should say that no, it's not. It's, it cannot be at the moment converted into medical evacuation mode. It can be only used for transferring passengers, but not casualties or injured people at the moment. But it can transfer casualty if the casualty is able to to sit. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. If, the, if there is casualty that is able to sit and is is a casualty with not major injuries, and especially in the neck or the spine or core, uh, of course, casualty can can be transferred in the carrier. 
all the questions that we have today. Um, as we Can say, I just, uh, sorry, Charlie, sorry. Um, I, it just, something came to my mind. Um, so with regards to this question about uh, transferring a casualty in a stretcher, so if the person is not well enough to, to be able to sit uh, by themselves, uh, even if they're strapped, um, or if they have injuries that require them to be uh, lie down um, and be in a stretcher, the you might want to check uh, wave um, four unit. Uh, the user manual um, I can either share with you if you uh, send an email to info at reflexmarine.com or it's available on our um, website. You can just download it. Um, that unit has a uh, quite low footprint if the question is about the footprint and you, you need a low footprint uh, type of carrier. But that unit can accommodate a, a stretcher and a paramedic. Uh, it, it does have a bigger footprint than the XT2. And it is uh, it does have um, it is bigger than the than the XT2 because it takes four people, uh, but it is for four person passenger for four passenger carrier, it is the the smallest footprint in the world type of carrier, uh, so that might be an option for you um, if you are looking for a contingency option or for a medevac option. Uh, for low capacity, a, a low capacity unit, uh, you you might want to to explore way four. Thank you, Charlie. I would like to add that uh, a great way to see this in a, I would say in a quick mode is just by visiting the YouTube channel and looking at the video, watching the video of the wave four. Uh, uh, testing testing procedure because in that in that testing video it can be seen how the stretcher is accommodated in the uh, on the wave and even the, the the test that we that we conducted that we carried out with the stretcher even in the water the unit floating with a casualty on the stretcher and all the and some other passengers with that, together with the the stretcher and and the casualty in the water. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you, Victor. Charlie, I'm not sure if we can perhaps share a link to that uh, to wave testing video in a chat box for everyone uh, for wave four, so uh, that uh, people who were interested in the stretcher capacity can can see that option um, after the webinar. Yeah, no problem. I will um, I will post that into the chat box now, and then obviously, yeah, we're going to be sharing sharing the. Uh, the recording with everyone who's attended today after so they'll be able to access that via that um if no one else has any other questions i think we can um end that here that takes us up to the hour um as we say we're available via our website and info at reflexmarine.com for any further questions um did you have any and we uh, look forward to hearing from you all soon thank you so much everyone for joining thank you goodbye Bye. Bye.